I think this exercise is the holy grail of all human movement. In terms of training the, the body that we have into health, into performance, I think this exercise is by far the best exercise I ever come across. And you guys know what I feel about the squat. To me, the squat is king of all exercise. But I, I, you know, after all these years of squatting, I realized that the squat is so freaking technical. It is very technical, and I think it is very easy to injure yourself, both the knees, the back, um, I guess, you know, even other areas, the hips, you know, for me, it's been the hips that, that's kind of troubled me as I've kind of been on this path to 300 kilo squat. So even though my favorite exercise of all time is the squat, I realized that for the mass, the, the population on, on large, um, it is very difficult to teach that. Even people come up to me and they're like, <clears throat> Ivan, like, you know, quickly teach me how to squat, like, you know, whether at work or personal life. And do you think, do you think, you know, they would show me the squat? Do you think this is the way to squat? And, you know, obviously I'm like, I'll oh, do this, do that, full death, this, that, the other. But oftentimes, like, you can't cue somebody into an ATG squat. There is like a, a whole freaking undergraduate degree you need to freaking sit through to get to an ATG squat. For some people, it's natural. Now, some people get born with a freaking PhD in, in human movement when it comes to the squat. Other people, they're like, you know, in, in, in uh, reception. You know, it's like they, they don't know how to hip hinge. They don't have the mobility. And so for those people, I got to talk about ankle mobility, hip mobility, spine, thoracic extension, all this stuff. And it's like you need to have a lot of things lined up for you to squat ATG. This is why I feel like this exercise, the one I'm going to talk about next, is by far the best thing you can do. That is the hyper. The 45 degree hyper for me is the best exercise ever. Now, I know this is a big ass statement and it's, it's you know, goes against the grain for, for maybe a lot of people. But for the, for the population at large, for the people, for the, for the desk warriors, for the 90 degree death people, you know, think about sitting. Your elbows are 90 degrees. Your, your hips are 90 degrees. Your, your, your knees are 90 degrees. Your hips are 90 degrees for eight freaking hours and then you get to the gym, you're like, all right, let's be clock of and loo. Let's like, you know, ATG it. You know, it's impossible. For people that work nine to five in these sort of conditions, it is freaking impossible to get somebody like that into, into a good position. Now, some people that, that work in the office might have spent a lot, a lot of time maybe as a junior playing sport and whatever. And so they've kind of kept that mobility going. But for the vast majority of people, they can't even pick up a freaking pen off the floor properly without like rounding the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, you know, getting on their toes, you know, no ankle uh, dorsiflexion, all that. I feel like every single freaking household in the world, especially in the, in, you know, in, in the, the world where, you know, we're lucky to kind of have all the necessities, you know, the shelter and food and all that sort of stuff. I get it. There's third world countries in the world that this doesn't apply to. But for the majority of people that are perhaps listening to this video, um, I think every single freaking household needs a, a 45 degree hyper. It is pretty much impossible to get injured on this machine. That's the number one thing I'm going to say. How do you injure yourself? Unless you're an absolute numbskull and you pull 400 kilos on your back and you do that, you're going to snap your spine. But it's probably the only exercise that I can think of. In fact, I can't think of any other exercise where you can teach somebody a hip hinge movement effortlessly. It's like, when I, you know, teaching somebody how to good morning is very difficult. Teaching somebody how to squat, deadlift is very, very difficult. It's a very technical set of exercises. The hyper, you get in there and you, all you really need is your body weight. You set the pads so it's kind of like, you know, at the right level so you can kind of hip hinge at the hip and off you go. It hits the hamstrings, it hits the glutes and it hits the lower back. And I've said this in the past, there is nothing more beneficial to humans on this planet than a healthy back because we use our backs all the time and i think especially nursing i know in nursing this is a fact but i think it's across the board it's transferable to other industries lower backs have the most highest percentage of injuries when somebody gets injured it's most likely going to be the lower back the 45 degree hyper is a, is a, is a cure for that you know you teach somebody how to hip hinge the hamstrings get involved and the glutes get involved and when those two things get involved, your lumbar spine is protected because when you pick something up, when you finally keep hinge in real world, when you're picking something off the ground, those muscles are on the map, your brain understands where they are, and you use those muscles to hip hinge rather than those muscles are asleep because you've sat on your bum for freaking eight hours, and then you round your lumbar spine to pick something up. And so you're kind of doing a bicep curl with those poor lower erectors to do the job. And so this is where injuries happen. This is why I feel like it is the freaking holy grail of, of movement. 
uh, especially at that entry level. Today, I went through this workout and right at the end, I was like, I basically the whole time I was thinking, I want to load the 45 degree hype. I got myself one of those fixed barbells, uh, 20 kilos. Uh, I thought about getting a proper barbell, but I couldn't fit it, you know, within the, you know, the equipment kind of either side of like, you know, I was just hitting the equipment. And so this bar is short, perfect for what I was going to do. Basically, I did five sets of 10 with the 20 kilos kind of like on that back rack position, kind of like what Klokov, uh, I saw Klokov do that for the first time, you know, a year ago, two years ago, whatever. Um, and after the first set, I was like, man, this is the greatest freaking exercise. It makes you feel healthy. I just can't explain it. It's, it's such a good exercise to finish a day. Um, I, I want to say that if <laughs> I've said this in the past, but if I ever open up a freaking gym, there's going to be a pile of dirt at the front door. <laughs> and if you can shift three, four tons of dirt from one corner to the other corner, you get free membership. That's one thing. Obviously, it's going to have like a sea of squat racks because that's what I believe in most. And I think the next thing is going to be a whole lot of 45 degree hypers. I just, it is the best exercise I think that we can do. If you think about the fact that it's easily taught, that's number one. And it, like you can basically get a really good workout from day one. What other exercise you can think of that hits the posterior chain you know, day one to this extent without any sort of technical breakdown. I just, I can't think of anything. You guys know, once again, that I am a fan of the squat. <laughs> After so many freaking days, I think you guys can work out that that's my favorite exercise. And if I could only do that, I would. Um, but I've realized through this journey that, it, you know, this squatting motion needs a whole host of supporting auxiliary accessory exercises to make the body balanced enough so you can survive the, the frequent squatting. Um, one of those exercises for me, I've realized for the second time around this year, the 45 degree hyper is an absolute gem. And while I was doing it today, I just thought to myself, man, like if I was a personal trainer and some guy comes into me and he's like, I want to, you know, health this, health that, I want to turn, but I'll be like, man, we're spending a whole freaking week on this hyper. <laughs> you know, like, I don't think too many people want to be, you know, coached uh, by me because I would be like, I don't care about biceps, I don't care about six packs, I don't care about traps, chest, try nothing. First of all, mate, we're going to solidify your freaking spine so you, you can't snap your spine in, in life. So you can go about your activities of daily living without dying and without snapping your freaking spine. And I think the first step in all of that is the 45 degree hyper. Get some freaking reps under that. Turn on those muscles which we sit on. Think about it. We, we sit on them. They are short. We sit on them. So they, they fall asleep. And then the pen drops off the table. We get up and we snap our spine because everything's asleep and all we're freaking really using is the lower back. Um, that's, that's what I think about that. I honestly think it's the holy grail of the movement because if you think about, if you, if you want to assess other movements um, you know, for the number one movement that anybody can do in the gym, I think the, the first thing is, can it be done day one? You can't load somebody with a squat properly day one. You can't load somebody properly in the deadlift, bench press, any of these free barbell movements, you can't really do it because it's too risky. Too risky to get somebody to do a one rep max when they've never done anything like that. It's a recipe for injury. But with this stuff, there's nothing else to it. Like your, your knees are straight and all you need to say to them is just hip hinge. And it's, if, if they start rounding the spine, you just limit them to the point where you know, they've reached the, the limit of their hamstring length and then get them back up and just go for it. What an exercise. The moment I loaded it today, I was like, man, this is the greatest thing ever. Right now, my erectors are absolutely pumped. Um, my hamstrings are absolutely pumped. Like they're gonna be sore tomorrow from doing these 20 kilos. The, the videos are coming up. I, I did three, three videos, five sets of 10 at the end with 20 kilos. Um, I had like three days off, I think two days off from doing any sort of hypers. So I was kind of refreshed to do this. Today was a freaking struggle. Even though you guys are seeing me do 200 kilos here, Today, man, I woke up and I was in a world of hurt. I told you guys yesterday, uh, let's have a look at this 200. I want to have a look at it again. I think I got stuck kind of halfway. Oh, it wasn't too bad. The pin squats really, um, I went quite heavy on the pin squats today, 270 for a set of 10. Um, so I was, I was quite, um, I pushed that quite hard. Um, and the interesting thing was like when I woke up this morning, my glutes, I've said this in the past, man, about this exercise. 
the reverse lunge. If you guys want to grow your butt, if you want to get your butt on the map, lunging, reverse lunging, split squats, maybe not split squats, I think reverse lunging is by far the best for me. It absolutely d- destroyed my lateral hip. Um, glute medius minimus it definitely smashed, even part of the glute maximus. I, I, I had trouble getting up this morning out of bed. I had trouble sitting on the toilet. I had trouble moving around. But the one thing that I found interesting was the pin squats and squatting wasn't all that interrupted by the fatigued lateral hip. So it goes to show you bilateral movement doesn't fatigue the muscles which are hit by... Uh, so bilateral movement uses a different set of muscles um, to, you know, to, to compared to unilateral movement uh, exercises. So I could still hit 200 kilos even though my glutes were really, really sore. Um, today I started off the workout, as you guys saw, with some more reverse uh, lunges. Get some blood in there. You know, quicken the recovery. If I rested for two, three days, not doing any any of that unilateral work, I'll be sore the whole time. But today I ended up doing 10 sets of body weight uh, sets. So I did, I actually did nine sets of 10 reverse lunges. And I kind of supersetted some of those sets with the, with the squats um, just to kind of get that recovery blood in there. But what a brilliant exercise. Brilliant, brilliant exercise. Um, those two, you know, exercises that I've kind of... Uh, talked about uh, in this video, the reverse, the, the hypers, my lord, top, top, especially for people that don't know what the hell is going on and want to get into gymming. This is your number one exercise you need to do. Um, and then the reverse lunging, you know, it takes a bit of practice to kind of get it good. And, and, you know, you need quite good hip flexor length. You need quite healthy knees to get into some of these positions. So it's not at the same level as hypers. But if you're somebody that's lifting fairly regularly and you're you know, able to squat properly, the reverse lunging is an excellent, excellent uh, alternative or accessory uh, movement. Uh, so this is this is the, the reverse hyper. Um, I use this 20 kilo weight, um, pop it up, contract the lats, and off you go. My Lord, what a freaking, what an exercise. I want to say I want to do this every single day, but clearly like you can't be loading this every single day. Um, who knows? And the other thing is it's really cheap. Like when I did the 20 freaking sets of 20 the other day, I woke up the following day feeling mint, feeling excellent. So it's really cheap, meaning that you can, you know, you don't have to spend too many recovery points with recovery. And, and it's like the best thing for posture. It's the best thing for, for health. You know, I remember seeing, what, what did I see Klokov do? I think he did like 80 kilos. I think he did 80 kilos for like a set of 20 um, on a GHD. Right, so even did a GHD. I think when you're doing a GHD, it's even it's even harder. Um, I think hypers are, are, are easier, um, and sort of the strength curve is a bit different. Like the tension is kind of never off, whereas with the GHD, when you get down to that kind of down uh, portion of the lift, you're basically free and hanging, and I don't think there's any any tension. So I, that's why I prefer this one. It kind of just feels better. Feels better to kind of um, jump in this machine. Um, so there it is. I hit 270 today on the pin squats. 200 on the squats, did some reverse lunges, and I did this freaking exercise. What an exercise, man. I recommend everyone to do this. If you're watching, if you've never done it, man, you got to do it. You got to do it. Do it regularly. Um, screw the PR, screw all the lifting that we talk about. This is just freaking health, man. Make sure your lower back doesn't freaking get snapped up the next time you pick up a pen. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.